Hi everybody, this is Joseph Sharon and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently read Bitter Orange Tree, written by Dota Ala Hardy. And this is a woman writing about status, more or less. And it's really quite interesting. And it's also very sad. But the way she describes her everyday living is just very resplendent and rich and just chock full of detail and you can really sense where she's coming from um and it's just it's very intriguing it's especially uh illuminating life in um an islamic community particularly that for a woman and it's very short it's translated from the original arabic if you're interested in a book that takes place in a more tropical or subcontinent, then this is definitely one you should read. Because I like the way she describes things, even though with the um, the poignancy of it or the bitterness of it, which makes sense for it to be titled Bitter Orange Tree, even though it is about bitter orange trees. So there is a segment that she speaks about her grandmother and that they did have a, a grove of bitter orange trees and lemons and etc. where they lived. So that was one thing that really signified her grandmother to her. And I'm not going to get to what actually happens to her grandmother's orange tree. This is actually very sad, but um, it reminded me a lot of um, Persephilus and The Tower, the 2018 movie, The Tower, the animated one, <clears throat> which is done in mixed media, and um, the movie um, Breadwinner. It, it was more reminiscent of Breadwinner and the tower to me, well, for Cephalus as well. I, I guess it had combination of all three movies uh, that were very reminiscent to me when reading the, the, the tale in and of itself. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about Joda. And Joda, she uh, was the first um, person to have a Man Booker International Prize in Celestial Bodies, which is prestigious, immensely prestigious. And of course, this was another novel that was given an award, and I can see why, just, just because of how um, replete with imagery this is. And like I said, you can you can really sense the, um, the, the anguish, the, um, I guess, the longing, also the sorrow that she portrays. Plus, there are also some moments of happiness, even though they are kind of stark in contrast to that of tragedy. And Marilyn Booth, she uh, apparently to um, this leaflet, she translated this one as well as Celestial Bodies. And I'm gonna read a little bit about the book in and of itself. Um, like I said before, it's the exploration of soul status, wealth, desire, and female agency, like I said. It's a mosaic portrait of a woman's, a young woman's gender attempt to understand her roots. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, she does discuss that quite a bit. But, um, it's basically all I have to say about Bitter Orchery, and unfortunately it was just way too short. Because I really, I was so drawn by just her her struggle and her um i could say that whole i think we all have that desire for something to reach beyond ourselves to make ourselves better if if we have that kind of mindset like the main character does in this book um from for a lot of people though it's it's more about doing what has to be done in order to survive the day-to-day, -day, which is also a part of Bitter Orange Tree. But for her, it's more about 
wanting something more out of life versus than just growing up in a uh, poverty-stricken neighborhood and just the whole um, I guess motive to um, to to make something better and yeah, to make something better of oneself to 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 do more to um, I guess to to uh, to create something that would be um, happier <laughs> less restrictive um, I don't know it's it's just very 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 hard hitting she doesn't sugarcoat anything it's it's one of those books that um if you're reading it and you think that you have a hard life it'll make you realize quite quickly that no you don't <laughs> but yet she still finds there's still beauty there is still beauty that comes from the ashes or the beauty that comes from um just being so unbelievably dirt poor um but yeah there there's quite a quite a bit of sorrow portrayed and i despite that despite all the um lacrimosia i guess for lack of better ter uh, terminology i did enjoy the book so um i will be i'm reading lachlan's right now um there's another book outside of that that'll be the last one that i review for a while because i'll be reviewing other ones because i just recently discovered that my library has the whole set of shadow and bone which i've only read the first three of the, of the trilogy which is the grisha trilogy it's all part of the grisha series but it's the very beginning so I, I really need to delve more into it because uh, I've absolutely savored every moment of it and absolutely adore it. Uh, beyond that, I have to say currently uh, my computer doesn't seem to be working, if at all. I've had to write everything out by hand which is very inconvenient. Although I will be typing everything out eventually. Um, let's see. Hopefully I'll be doing more movie reviews as I usually do. But um, I don't really have that much else to say other than there are, are some exciting things that are happening in my life, which would be the coming of the studio, which is taking a little bit longer than I'd like, um, <laughs> but it, it will get there eventually and I will be doing animation, sound mixing, stop motion, and doing um, oration, which will basically be just me telling my cryptid story, mostly probably just cryptid stories. I'm hoping I can go to abandoned places and, and tell cryptid stories because I think it, for mood it'd be absolutely Say magnifique. Uh, <laughs> what else do I have to say? Um, they're renovating my work as of now, and it's probably going to take them a year to finish. And I'm excited to see what they're going to be doing with the facility. Um, things are slowing down quite a bit. The peak season is starting to level out quite a bit. We've been working ourselves ragged. We're dealing with a lot of heavy product in my area of the building. <clears throat> yeah, and it wears us out, but beyond that, everything's going quite well. And because of all the moving of heavy items and heavy equipment, I've lost quite a bit of weight, if you can't tell. Uh, beyond that, I can't really say that much else, although actively I am currently hoping to meet someone, if anybody. Um, I'm not sure who's that, who that is going to be. I think that I've done enough work on myself that um, I've overcome a lot of the red flags that a lot of toxic, so-called toxic women have. And I don't really consider myself toxic, but uh, I was going through a, a period of time where 
I just, I didn't want to reach out to anybody. I didn't want to bother anyone or consider myself as a burden because I just felt like if I involved myself in somebody else's life, I was just uh, infecting them with um, my problem, which was um, just, just the fact that I felt like I, I needed help to do things. And actually, it's not a weakness to ask for help. Don't let anybody else hammer that narrative into you. Although there are people who would see that as a weakness and take advantage. So you just, you have to approach everything with discernment and be super cautious. That's, that's why I, I just, I go into every situation with my antennae up uh, and my shields drawn secure. So I think that's what's been the most challenging for me recently. Haven't really met anybody. I've talked to a few people. They don't really... Um, interests me all that much. Although one of the toxic things I noticed that um, there was a movie, uh, not a movie, but a, a video talking about, uh, I'm one of those people like, what's your sign? I don't do it for that reason. I do it because the bad people say, well, oh, well, that's uh, very um, superficial and also reveals that uh, there, you know, you have some problems well I don't do it because of that I do it because I'm genuinely curious um and I I don't really believe in um astro ast astronom astrology yeah astrology I don't really believe in astrology I just I think astrology is one of those things it's it's more fun than anything else and you know people shouldn't date each other based on science no if, if they like it if there's a mutual attraction there if you have chemistry then even if your signs don't aren't compatible, it doesn't really matter. And you should go for it. Um, I'm, I'm open-minded when it comes to things like that. Um, let's see. Beyond that, all the other points that the, the lady made on their video, um, they, they didn't um, apply to me. I'm not one of those people. Uh, I used to be, I used to be, uh, if you can't handle me at my worst, you can't handle me at my best sorts, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not anymore. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why I was like that. I, I guess I was going through a lot of hardship at the time. Yeah. Losing, losing somebody can really, can really change you. Um, but like I said, I've had a lot of time to work on myself. Um, I'm doing better and I'm just, I'm hoping to find that one person who would take me into their life and we could go on adventures together. We can see the world. We can travel. We can learn. We can help others and we can be a beacon. And I think that would be better, <laughs> honestly. But if God doesn't want that, then I completely, I get it. Um... This is going to be night two of Greencastle Music Fest. So most likely I will have a video because I ran out of battery today. So that's why we don't have a video today. But beyond that, that's pretty much all I'm up to. And hopefully I can get my computer back up and running and we'll just see how that goes. And um, until next time, that's all, I have to t that's all I have to tell. All I have to report and all the current news on this side of the veil. So until next time. Live on prosper. Ciao, Tutti.